Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet the church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In reverence to reading of the word of the Lord, we're going to open up our Bibles in the book of Psalms. Psalms 46. We're going to read a couple of verses. We just sang a song that says, If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. This song has a lot to do with this psalm. It speaks of a perfect faith in God. And read from the first to the seventh verse. From first to the seventh. It says the following. God is a refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though they be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling scylla. There's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We praise you, God, for everything. We are thankful for this fellowship that we have with you in your war. We, may, we ask you that we may bless your people in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. The church may be seated. The first verse of the Bible says that in the beginning the Lord created the heavens and earth. So we can see in the first verse of the Bible the greatness, the glory. That is this God that has been once again proclaimed in this place. And God has done all things through the power of His Word. And we read this verse, which the, this God, the God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the God of gods, the Lord of ho lords, the Lord of hosts, He has elected us to be His people, and sheep of his flock, of his pasture. And we have elected him to be our God, to be our, our Lord, to be our helper, to be the one that will be always present to rescue us, to protect us, to deliver us. God is our refuge and strength. God uses here two words. The first is refuge. And what is refuge? Refuge is a hiding place. Refuge is a place where man goes to in order to hide, in order to preserve itself, to free itself from something that may happen, may happen at any time. In the same book of Psalms, it also speaks of a refuge, of a shelter. And those that inhabit in the refuge of the high 
most and the shadow of the Almighty will be resting. Same God. So it's a God provided a refuge, provided a shelter, he provided a hiding place. So it is interesting that if it is a refuge, if it is a, a hiding place, if it is a shelter, how can I go there? If it is a hid hiding place, if I don't know where it is located. And at once, the Lord Jesus, while he was speaking to his disciples, says the, said the following, In the house of my father there are many dwellings. And one of his followers asked the following, How can we go there if we don't know where it is? And the Lord Jesus said, Thomas, it was Thomas, right? If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it was Thomas. I am the, uh, I am the way. So the way to the refuge, the way to the hiding place. Man only goes to the hiding place, to the refuge and hiding place when he is feeling threatened and is, is being threatened when he feels like his life is at risk. And many times we are like this. And we notice that our life is at risk. We seek a place to hide and place to be protected. And the Lord is so wonderful. And He knows that we need this shelter, this hiding place. And He has already provided those things for us. Sometimes we are worried about so many things. And sometimes we think that there is no room for us in this shelter, in this refuge that the Lord has provided. But in the book of Psalms it says that even the birds found house and the seagull find a, found a place to be. Jesus, when he mentions and uh, speaks of uh, the Sermon of the Mountain, he says, look at the birds uh, in the sky, they don't, they don't plant and harvest, but the Lord feeds them and gives them a, a house. Aren't you much more important than them? Sometimes we, we underestimate the worth that a soul has for God. Sometimes we underestimate, you underestimate how much you, my brother and sister, you were special for God. There's a song that says, you are special. Why you are special? Because God loved you so much in such a way that He sent His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him may not perish but have an eternal life. God is our refuge. So tonight you may say that you found in God a refuge, a hiding place, an inhabitant, inhabitants, a strong inhabitant. A safe inhabitants, an inhabitants that is unshakable, that does not suffer any type of threat, that cannot be destroyed, because our God is a God that is indestructible. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why it is said that it is, He is a fortress. Strong is our God. Martin Luther, when he was suffering so many threats, he hid on the castle, but it was not the castle that saved his life, but was the Lord, the God of Martin Luther, who preserved his life. That's why he says a song, Strong Castle, 
strong castle is our God. God, my brother and sister, God's is your strong castle. God has provided a refuge, a hiding place that is a fortress. It's a song that we used to sing a lot in the, ma the heavenly mansions. In a special place, the Lord has perverse, pr prepared for you, for me, for our lives. Refuge and fortress. The Lord's also help. What is help? Uh, help is uh, deliverance. Help is salvation. In the name of Jesus, translated, is, means salvation. So it is a present salvation. It's not an absent salvation. Jesus is not distant from us. But he is where two or three are gathered, and his name, there he will be. So we can say that this uh, rescue that is very present, is present here tonight to, to help you, to give you assistance, to help you, to strengthen your steps, to remove any concern from your soul. So, very present help. Present means something that is happening right now. A present also means gift in Portuguese. It's a benefit. A child was born. Uh, Jesus is a gift. Jesus was a gift to our lives. Very present on um, anguish. Because very present on um, parties, very being present on when everything is all right, when everything is blue, when the world is everything is fine. We find many people present in those moments when everything goes well. But help very present in the moment anguish of anguish. Only the Lord. It has uh, this. So we are not going to fear. I will not fear. He is my strength. Why would I fear? What do I have to fear? If I die, I'll die with Christ. If I live, I live for Christ. Paul, he, in one of his letters, he says this, who is going to separate me from, from the love of God? And he keeps describing and, and he's saying that I'm sure that not like death and life and enemy or and height or death will separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord is a faith the perfect faith in God and faith we know that is what that we cannot see but believe that is going to happen to us it says, even if the ground move, if the mounts fall into the seas, and he speaks of the chains of the land, of the earth. It's interesting that the earth, it changed because the Lord has, Lord has said that upon the mounts, and he spoke of the seas, and the, the land, it moves. We know that. So when the ground moves, causes great uh, turbulence. The earth speaks of men, and many times men change, and it brings many preoccupations. The husband changes, the wife changes, the children change, the times change, and it brings many concerns, many disturbances. And he speaks of the mountains. Mount is what is big, powerful, is capable of 
withstand many storms, hurricanes. Even if the waters roar, if they roar like a lion, it's because the people, the prophet, prophetic moment that the that we are living in, the waters are roaring everywhere. So even if all of this happens, if the mountains shake, th they are perturbed. He speaks of something that is extraordinary. He speaks of a river, a river, in the middle of the chaos, in the midst of the difficulties, of the problems, of the anguishes, of the storms. Fourth verse speaks of a river. There's a river whose currents bring joy to the house of the, to the seed of God. My brother and sister, you who are here with us, sometimes the world is like this. You are seeing the world in this way. And actually, the world is going through all those transformations. But the Lord wants to tell you, my brother and sister, that there is a river. There is refreshing. There is a blessing from God to your life, to your home, where there is a rest. Because the Bible says that the Lord is our rest. Today is Saturday. The seventh day. The day of the rest of the Lord. The Lord has brought you here once t tonight, but He brought you here so you can rest in His presence. There's a river whose which has currents that bring joy to the seed of God. It's the river of the Holy Spirit that is passing by us tonight, purifying us, sanctifying us, removing our preoccupations and anguishes, bringing peace, consolation, and relief. This river, which is the Holy Spirit, that brings joy to the city of God. My brother and sister, you know when the city of God is rejoiced, when there is a celebration in heaven, it is when the sinner is repented. The city of God, it manifests and celebrates, makes a great celebration when the sinner repents, when there is salvation of souls. And tonight, the city of God is rejoicing. Why? Because the Lord Jesus, through His blood, has already saved our souls. The whole, the high place, the Lord has prepared a holy place, a dwelling for us, where there is no crying and, and tears, nor um, sadness or pain. And those things that the Lord has prepared for you, for us, for each one of us. So, why should you be concerned if our rescue comes from the Lord? If, I, if, my, if my rescue, like it says Psalm 21, I raise my eyes where my rescue comes from. My rescue comes from the Lord. Psalm 124 says that our rescue from the Lord. So, salvation is for everyone. The rescue is for everyone. The deliverance is for everyone. The grace of the Lord is for everyone. The mercy of God is for everyone. Because the desire of the Lord is that everyone be saved. And that they know the truth. But the Lord is in its midst. God has provided a holy place, a dwelling for you, for me, for each one of us, where He will be they are present. And Jesus speaks of this, about the new Jerusalem. And it will come from heaven as a bride for, his, for the groom. This shelter, this hiding place is what the Lord has provided for each one of us. The nation are angry, 
the mountains move. I'm not worried about this. My sister and my brother, don't worry about this. Let the nations. Don't worry about the kingdoms. You know why? Because when the Lord raises His voice, the problem has been resolved. People may cry, may they may fall to the ground, and, but if, if God said something, everything calmed down. Remember when Jesus he was uh, in the ocean in a boat with the apostles. There was a storm, strong wind. The water was coming into the boat of of our brothers there. So they awoke Jesus, and he said. Be quiet. Remember the song? And there, were, there was a great calm on, on the sea. So the last word, my brother and sister, is the one that comes from heaven, the one that comes from God. This word that comes from heaven, that comes from God, is for your life tonight, is for my life tonight. The nations, God will... Don't worry about the nations. God will raise His voice. Amen. You believe the brother believe in this. The sister believe in it. So if you believe, brother and sister, you will see the glory of God. Because whoever comes close to God, that believe and believe that He exists. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now. As we come to the close of the message, he says, The Lord of the hosts is the Lord of hosts is with, with the Lord of hosts is, is with us, everything is fine. The Lord is in your house, in your family, at work, so then you should be fine. If God is with me, who is going to mess with me? When I was a child actually when I was younger my father was about my size but I thought that my father was the strongest man in the world so if somebody messed with me I would say I'm gonna call my father he's going to take care of the problem so if somebody mess with me I'm gonna call my father amen <laughs> hey okay deal with my father okay now, uh, try to battle with him, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of lords, lords, the King of kings. He's your father. Do you know that God is your father? We have a father. And our father is God. And God gave us the power to be made children of God. To those who believe, I'm asking you, if you believe, if you believe, then you have been received the power to be made children of God because you believe in God. You believe in Jesus. God has given us this power and this right. I can say today that I'm the Son of God because I believe in salvation through Christ Jesus. Because I believe that the blood of Jesus has purified me of all of my sins. Because I believe that through the blood of Jesus I have access to the, the sanctuary of God. You can only do this through the precious blood of Jesus. Do you know who you, who you are, my brother and sister? You are complaining, you are worried about what? You have a, a God that is your Father, this mighty God, a powerful God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord Jesus is with us. Now, as we come to a close, the God of Jacob is our our refuge it is interesting he, he could have said the king of Israel or king of Abraham or king of Isaac or Paul or Peter 
in the past Daniel, David, but he said the king, the God of Jacob, who Jacob, Jacob was. Jacob was the one who was born without the right of the blessing for uh, of the firstborn. He was born without any right, but he fought. The Bible says he fought with God, and he prevailed. He didn't. It's not like he fought with God, with God, but he, but he was uh, uh, seeking God in such a persistent way that God gave him the blessing that he needed for his life. So the God of Jacob, the God of the one he, who didn't have any right, wouldn't have any right to be called children of a God. And we're born, we are men who was created. We're creatures of God. But when we accept Jesus and His sacrifice in our lives, we are able to reach what I mentioned earlier. We achieve this right. Jacob was able to achieve this right. So the God of Jacob, or the God, the one who, who seeks the Lord, the one who does not complain anything about anything with God, but the one who pleased to God for His favor, His love, for His grace, and for His mercy. Sometimes man thinks that he has rights. We don't have any right. Because the wage of sin is death. This is my right. What I deserve is to die. But the grace, the favor and mercy of God allowed me to live and live in His presence and live in His kingdom and live in His sanctuary. And this is the right that through Jesus is transferred to each one of us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. My brother, my sister, leave this place knowing of one thing. The God of Jacob is your refuge, your, is your strength, is your rescue, very present in your life. The Lord has shown a man that was concerned about wars and rumors of wars. And he came here in the house of the Lord with this concern. But today he will leave this place rested because he knows that he has a God that takes care of everything, that protects, that, that looks after his life and does not let him down. And he's always present to help him, to rescue him, to always ready to help him. And also there was a woman that spent the day thinking about a petition she has made a while ago. And she came tonight um, thinking about uh, asking God about this petition again. But as I said, the, our God is the God of Jacob. And we don't have any right to complain about anything. Amen, my brother and sister. You, you don't have this right. What you can do is to plead for God's mercy. And God, who is merciful, will use His mercy and give you favor in what you need. God is now, is, doesn't work for me. He's not my employee. I'm not God's boss. I'm a servant and I'm not a good servant. I need God's mercy. My sister, you need the mercy of, of the Lord. The Bible says that the mercies of the Lord renew every morning. And today in the morning when you woke up, the Lord had provided to you the mercy for your life, for you, for your home. That's why, my sister, you are here tonight. Because the desire of the Lord is to bless you. But I'm going to give an advice from God to your life. Rest in the Lord and wait in Him. 
and everything else he'll take care of. Amen. Now we're going to sing a song. to God. Hallelujah. The church will now stand up. This is my God.
It's wonderful to be in your presence, Lord. Glorify your holy name. We're imperfect, but you are perfect, Lord. We thank you because one day we removed us from the world. You made us come to your presence. Every day has made us live better in your presence. Every day, Lord, you have taught us how to serve you. Lord, you have done more and more made us see that you have a, a heavenly dwelling for us. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your love that is unconditional. Lord, we thank you because truly we are dependent on you, Lord. Lord, we are people that plead for your second coming, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. We give honor and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen.
glorify you, Lord, because great has been your grace, your favor, your mercy upon our lives. We adore you for this service and for sweet presence here in this place. And plead, Lord, that you may at this instant search each heart, Lord, and give to your children not what they came here asking for, but whatever they need for their lives, for their homes, for their houses. We know that your plans, Lord, are better than ours, and that your thoughts are higher than ours. And as your Son Jesus taught us how to pray, may your will be done. Bless our homes, bless our family members, we pray. In the holy name of Jesus, in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with your, the people of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We want tonight just to remind the brethren, the text the Lord has given to us, which is the theme for the year 2017 Revelation 14 7 saying with loud voice fear the Lord give him glory because the time has come for his judgment and praise the one who made this heaven and earth and the sea and the fount of waters my brother and sister if you need a prayer a clarification of the word of the gift, spiritual gift that was that were received. We are here at your disposal to pray for your life, to clarify regarding the things you may have heard tonight. I would like to remind you tomorrow that at 10.30 we have a commitment with the Lord. It's Sunday school and everybody is invited to participate. Pastor Ronald also said that said to uh, inform the brethren that from 15, 16, and 17 of December, we're going to have our seminar there in the region Orlando, region of Orlando. So the brethren already prepare your your briefcase and every, get everything ready. It's going to be necessary a few extra days. We're going to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So let us get organized so we can participate. I never went before, so I, I, I desire to go. F uh, from this point onwards, I I'm already going to get ready to set this time aside with, with the Lord. We're going to have a quick meeting with Group B after assistance. And uh, if you desire help, just raise your hand, I will give you assistance.